An awkward guy named Neil walks down the school hallway, looking at the campus ladies while mentally reciting the other names of the Prince of Darkness. While Neil is busy organizing his locker, his outgoing best friend Matt walks up to him and proudly displays the brightly colored clothing he has been using to attract women. Then, he encourages his reserved best friend to use his card tricks to win ladies over. Seconds later, Matt sees the popular Cheryl and suddenly grabs her. He convinces his best friend to perform a card trick for Cheryl. The magician asks her to select a card, tear it up, and hand it back to him. After he shows her the wrong card, Cheryl starts to turn away, unimpressed, but the trick isn't over yet. For his last instruction, the timid guy requests that she check under her top. She pulls the card out and is shocked to see that it's the one she chose. Blown away by the magic trick, Cheryl invites Neil and Matt to the party she's throwing at her house the following weekend, but Neil has to turn down the invitation because he has to go to a religious ceremony at church. While Matt tries to find out how Neil pulled off the trick, Denise suddenly approaches them. She gives them a heads up, telling the teen Neil to run and hide because Kent, Cheryl's boyfriend, is looking for him after learning that he performed a magic trick on her. As they run from Kent and his friend, Matt forces his best friend into the janitor's closet, where he accidentally pushes down a liquid soap bottle pump, splashing a white fluid on his pants. When Kent opens the door, he sees Neil scrubbing the stain away and thinks he's engaging in some sort of self-gratifying behavior. He laughs at what he sees and then proceeds to direct everyone's attention to the embarrassed Neil. That evening, as they get ready for church, Neil and Matt put on their robes and enter the worship hall, where everyone is chanting to worship Lucifer. While the cult leaders, Sheldon and Mary, are preaching a sermon, the friends are goofing off, distracting the other members. Suddenly, a woman brings in a goat as an offering, and the crowd watches the preachers take the goat's life. After the members exit the hall, Neil is confronted by his parents, Gary and Shelley, who are disappointed by his unruly behavior during the sermon. The awkward son blames his best friend Matt for starting it. Suddenly, Sheldon and Mary approach Neil and his parents to follow up on the preparations for the upcoming ceremony. As a way to check his readiness, Sheldon asks Neil to recite the 40 different names of the entity they worship. Unfortunately, he is only able to recall a few, and even mispronounces one of them. When Neil and Matt go upstairs, they push a bookshelf that leads to the inside of a mansion. As Matt gets ready to leave, he questions why his best friend has to stay pure and thinks that he's missing out on a lot of fun because of it. Back in the underground church, the leaders speak with Gary and Shelley and brief them on the upcoming plan to sacrifice their son. Neil's mom insists that they explain to Neil what's going to happen in the ceremony, but Gary refuses, fearing it might frighten him and Matt. On Neil's 18th birthday, and the day of his sacrifice, the family gathers for a small celebration. When Neil attempts to open up about a girl, Gary is suspicious and questions him if they've made love. When his son insists that he is still chaste, the concerned father reminds him about his purpose in church and says he should focus on it. When he leaves to go to the bathroom, Shelley tries to convince her husband to tell their son the truth, but Gary still refuses. While sitting in the living room of the church, Neil tries to commit Lucifer's many names to memory. As he memorizes, his proud mother sits next to him and gives him a big hug. When Matt sees him, he expresses his anticipation for the ritual so that his friend can finally be able to break his vow of celibacy. To officially begin the ceremony, Sheldon and Mary announce that everyone must assemble in the worship hall. Members are instructed to put away their phones and tablets before the start of the ancient ritual. Soon after, Sheldon and Mary have Neil lie on the sacrificial table in front of them. The ceremony begins and the cloaked worshippers begin a series of chants meant to pay tribute to the Prince of Darkness. However, Matt grows suspicious of his best friend's fate after hearing the phrase sacrificial lamb. As the leader draws his ornate blade, Matt confirms his doubts and immediately grabs his pal to save his life. As the friends run away, Sheldon panics and mentions that the ritual shouldn't be interrupted. He issues a directive to Matt's father Paul, a police officer, and cult members Brad and Colette to track down Neil and bring him back. Seconds later, the disappointed Sheldon warns Neil's parents that they will be excommunicated if their son doesn't return before sunrise, because failure to perform the ritual will bring about the return of the one they fear most, Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, the two escapees have made it to Neil's house, where the scared teen considers calling the police in a fit of panic. Matt tries to stop him from making a phone call because doing so would alert his father and the rest of the police force, who are mostly church members. He grabs the phone in an attempt to distract the cops, but he inadvertently reveals their location. As they are getting ready to leave the house, Matt comes up with the idea of getting his best friend deflowered so that he won't have to be sacrificed. Neil takes out his phone to contact Denise. As they rush to go to her place, he leaves the phone providing a clue to Paul as to their whereabouts. 
On the way to Denise's place, Neil plans to be honest with her and say that his life will be saved if they perform the deed together, but Matt suggests he keep it a secret, much like how he performs his card tricks. Inside Denise's house, Neil tries to talk her into making love with him. Seeing Denise's dismay, he explains that he needs to do it in order to avoid being sacrificed at Lucifer's altar. Denise finds his story ridiculous and is in disbelief that he'd even try to use such an outlandish tale just to get with her. As Matt stands guard outside, he hears the approach of the pursuer's vehicle. He panics and runs to alert Neil so they can get away. Later, Colette and Brad reach Denise's house and ask her if she's seen Neil recently. She reveals that he was in the house earlier, but is on his way to a party at Cheryl's. She lets the couple in and gives them directions to where the party is happening. Before they leave, Brad mentions that they worship the occult, making Denise realize that Neil was telling the truth about being sacrificed all along. She plans to head to the party to warn her friends. Outside Cheryl's house, Neil is hesitant about whether or not they should go inside. According to Matt, his only chance to sleep with someone before sunrise is with Cheryl. Inside, Matt introduces Neil to the house party guests. Kent and the others continue to make fun of him because of what happened in the janitor's closet. When Neil tries a drink, he feels sick to his stomach and has to rush to the bathroom, but the partygoers outside the door mock him and say he's doing a self-gratifying act again. Instead of running away or hiding in the bathroom, Neil confidently goes out and pushes Ken off the table so he can do his first magic trick, where he sends confetti towards the bully's face. When the magician asks for volunteers for his second stunt, everyone suggests Kent. He has the bully pick a card and show it to everyone. After drawing out a card, the guests and the volunteer confirm that it's the wrong one. Suddenly, the trickster wraps up his act by instructing the volunteer to check his pants, where he surprisingly finds a spinning firework, much to the crowd's delight. Once again, Cheryl is amazed by the magic trick and attempts to invite Neil up to a room where they can be alone. Minutes later, Denise enters Cheryl's house to look for Neil and Matt. Meanwhile, Colette finds an intoxicated Matt and uses her charm to get him to tell her where Neil is. Matt falls for the woman's wily ways and reveals Neil is probably already making love to someone. Worried, Colette rushes to find him in the rooms upstairs. While Cheryl and Neil are making out, Denise finds them and warns him that the church members have infiltrated the party. When Colette and Brad are heading up the stairs, Neil kisses Denise to take the pursuer's attention away from them. The flustered Denise then proposes to help by distracting the pursuer so that Neil and Matt can escape. To flee from the area, Matt and Neil attempt to steal a car. When the intoxicated Matt crashes the vehicle into the car behind them, Colette sees them, but the friends manage to drive away. After the boys flee the scene, Brad and Colette abduct Denise and take her with them before tailing Matt and Neil. While Neil is driving, the stolen car suddenly runs out of gas, so they push it to the nearest gas station. As Neil waits for Matt to pay at the cashier, he thinks back on his mother's messages, in which she assured him that he was meant for great things. When Matt returns, Neil suggests paying a lady to sleep with him to save his life. From afar, the convenience store clerk, also a church member, hears their conversation. Back in church, Sheldon, Mary, and Neil's parents are waiting for an update. The leader mentions that if Neil fails to appear, they must find a replacement offering. Meanwhile, Neil and Matt drive into the city to find a courtesan. They come across Ashley, who directs them to the brothel. The receptionist asks if they prefer someone specific, and they choose Ashley. The blonde courtesan insists on taking Matt first, despite the friend's insistence that Neil go first. When it's Neil's turn, he sees that Ashley has a pentagram tattoo on her back, indicating she's a member of the church. He tries to follow her in the brothel's hallway, but Paul suddenly appears and chases him. To escape, Neil fakes a raid so people come out of their rooms and block the policeman's way. Outside, Matt and Denise are together in Colette's vehicle. To distract the people chasing Neil, Matt gets out of the truck. They mistake him for his friend and go after him instead. Dot while the pursuers are distracted. Denise signals Neil to get in the truck so they can escape. During the ride, Denise confesses that she likes Neil, and he tells her that the feeling is mutual. Neil pulls over in an alley so he can make love to Denise. However, before they can do it, he finishes early on her leg. Shortly after, Paul finally catches them and confirms that Neil is still pure. He's tied and dragged into a van, where he's reunited with his best friend. With their hands tied behind their backs, Neil tells Matt that he and Denise were about to do it but he got a little too excited. His best friend remarks that they could have avoided the current crisis if he had simply admitted his feelings for Denise sooner. When Neil misinterprets his words, they end up arguing and kicking each other. The friends are taken back to the church to continue the ritual. Paul locks them in a cell alongside a goat. Matt confesses that he cried while doing the deed with the courtesan, and Neil comforts him. After they reconcile, Matt suddenly comes up with the idea that they should do the deed with each other to save his life. 
At first, Neil is hesitant, but he eventually agrees to the plan. Meanwhile, Colette leaves Brad in the lobby to watch Denise, but she ends up taking the candelabra and uses it to knock the man out. Upon returning to the cell, Paul and another member find Neil and Matt on the verge of carrying out the act. The cop opens the cage and takes Neil out so he can take him to the hall to be sacrificed. Minutes later, Neil is once again on the table, and his life is about to be offered to Lucifer. While the members are busy chanting, Denise infiltrates the hall and tosses the candelabra onto the drapes, starting a fire. Before the blade reaches Neil's body, the cloaked worshippers notice the flames on the flag. At first, they take it as a sign from their god, but the leader eventually realizes the fire is real. As the flames grow, the people flee the burning area, leaving Neil restrained on the table. Within seconds, Denise gets on top and straddles him and they make love in front of the congregation, saving Neil's life. Days later, Neil performs a magic trick for his girlfriend Denise. After asking her if he has the right card, he then takes a video game cartridge out and gives it to her as a gift. Then, Neil's parents, who are now devout Christians, walk out of the church and tell their son and his girlfriend that they missed a wonderful service. Shelley reminds Neil that Jesus loves him, while Gary tells him that Jesus gave his life for his sins. Shortly after, Matt also exits the church with three ladies. Neil invites him to hang out, but Matt declines, cheekily saying he is Bible study with the three women. 